So I want to basically respond to the prosperous lifestyle of America's anti-prosperity gospel preacher, and that would be John MacArthur. When the news broke on this in early February, I kind of stood back and just, I wanted to see how it played out. Um, and really what I was just looking at was the critics and what they, how they would attack John MacArthur. Now, I was asked from someone who was subscribed to my other channel what I thought about the situation. And to be honest, the answer to the question, I don't care. I honestly do not care how John MacArthur spends his money outside of the church. Now, it's his prerogative that he desires to live in a, a, a pretty well-sized mansion. Um, if you know anything about L.A. real estate, you know that it's extremely expensive, probably more expensive than, than any other part of the country is uh, Los Angeles. And so the housing market is extremely expensive. But you have to understand that John MacArthur is an extremely wealthy man. Uh, his, uh, his educational empire nets him well over $70 million of tax-free revenue every single year. Uh, John MacArthur is a wealthy man, but so is John Piper. And so is Vody Balcom. And so is Paul Washer. Okay, so was R.C. Sproul. These are all wealthy men. Okay, and to be honest, I think, and I've I've said this before, I think John Mc, John Piper is the greatest example of how a man of God treats wealth. <clears throat> John Piper has made it clear that he has placed people, men of God, that he trusts, that he has entrusted, to oversee the funding that is uh, or the revenue that is earned yearly from the the sale of his his books. So he basically cannot touch that money. Uh, I think he said, uh, this was a couple years ago, it may ch have changed, but I think he said he earns annually <clears throat> under $50,000. And he chose to do that. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Uh, my opinion regarding John MacArthur is, I don't care how he lives outside of the church. What I care is how he preaches behind the pulpit, how he leads the people of God. That's all I care about, because that's all that matters. Um, and ultimately, that is what a man of God does. Uh, now, if you look at the, 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 the income that John MacArthur, his family and his uh, <clears throat> his empire bring in, it's, he's actually pretty modest. I mean, they say that the news report says that the empire has one hundred thirty million dollars in assets. OK, uh, earning 70 million dollars a year in tax free revenue. So it's it's nothing for. So we may look at it like, oh, he's got a big house. But to him, that's really pennies. OK, if the house cost a million dollars or one point five million dollars, it's really not that much. Uh, and so from our standpoint, it can look like, oh, he's he's you know, he's living that kind of life. But really, it's not. Uh, he never boasts about that. He never does that. Uh, that's one thing that Joe Osteen has done. You never hear about John MacArthur talking about anything he's bought or any type of cars he has or, or anything having to do with money, period. He doesn't boast in it. Um, and if this story hadn't broke, we would have never known. So at the end of the day, uh, I think it's good that we realize that these men of God are men who earn a lot of money. I mean, Bodhi Bakum lives on a compound in Africa. I mean, this house is huge. It's like a gated compound. Okay. So it's not just John MacArthur. So at the end of the day, if we're going to judge John MacArthur, we've also got to judge the other men of God who lived very well as well. R.C. Sproul lived well as well. So um, at the end of the day, it comes down to what are they preaching? Are they staying true to the, the gospel? Are they being biblical? Uh, are they are they being an example to the church? And they are. All these men are. So to answer the question, I'm not concerned with how big John MacArthur's house is. I'm concerned with his theology and what he preaches and that he remained biblical. That's it.